Hello and a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the official book launch of Stories of Integration on this beautiful Sunday, 17th of October, 2021. My name is Coral and I am delighted to be your MC for today's event. We have with us this afternoon many special guests and friends and participants, and we're really honoured to have the presence of our guest of honour, Senior Minister of State, Mr. Chi Hon Tat, as well as other distinguished guests from the community. Give you a taster of what to expect. We will begin this event with a video montage of some of the individuals who have been featured in this book. This will be followed by messages from the author and the concept author, writer, and a special address from the guest of honor. We will then go into the book launch ceremony where we will invite everyone to get your book and wrap it, take off the, the ribbon, take off the wrapper, hold it up to the camera, and then we will take a photo shoot. And following that, we'll go to the next section of the program, which is the panel discussion. And then we'll end up with a short session for comments and questions by all our participants before we close the program at 3.30 p.m. Now, without much further ado, let us formally begin the program now. Stories of Integration is a very engaging book written by Mrs. Wandana Agarwal and conceptualized by Mr. Prakash K. Hantamsarya. It shares the stories of 30 amazing individuals who have journeyed from diverse countries like Belgium, Yugoslavia, India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Philippines, Malaysia and Vietnam, uprooted themselves and now call Singapore their home. To kick start this event, let's sit back and enjoy the special video montage put together by some of our featured participants. I'd like to thank Madam Wandana and Mr. Prakash for bringing us together in this book. Coming from an Indonesian parents, Singapore meant a lot to me during my childhood days. I had a keen observation of the historical environment here and the landmark and was moved by the rapid development to this day. My most memorable moment of my life and contribute to Singapore is not just once but many a time when I pull the Singapore flag high as Art Ambassador of Singapore in international art event in Asia, across Europe and in the Middle East. I would like to dedicate this to all my fellow friends and artists and to all my families, especially to my wife and my daughter and late parents who share my dreams. My name is Ming Le. I'm a Vietnamese Singaporean. Since I got married in Singapore, I always call Singapore my home. After nine years working overseas, I brought my invention back to Singapore and set up Kamai Therapeutics in January 2019. That was when I did not want to leave Singapore again. Hence, I brought my family back here to settle down. As a scientist and entrepreneur, I wish to contrib contribute to the development of Bi the biotech industry in Singapore and become a leader in this field. For newcomers in Singapore, I believe that the longer you stay, the more you will love this island. As long as you work hard and be patient, your contribution will be recognized. Singapore is home, but sometimes I reflect on all the what ifs in my life. What if I had gone to London? What if I had moved to New York? What if I had remained in Hong Kong? What if I hadn't moved from India at all? These were all real life-changing options. But I say this with the conviction of a Daisy who has lived here in Singapore for 30 years, that I don't think I would be as anchored and embraced professionally and culturally anywhere as I have been here in Singapore. The times have changed and are changing. 
and I wish that my children, who have also voluntarily returned to the country, enjoy the same sense of acceptance that I did. It would hurt if they became uncomfortable and cynical about their future here as a minority. So let's face it, they are starting to ask the same question that I did. What if we had not returned? And I say to them, have faith, be patient. I was, and it paid off. But the truth is that the younger generation is in short, patience is in short supply with them. Singapore urgently needs to have an intelligent and cogent strategy to dull their apprehensions and keep the promise of our country being a prosperous and fulfilling society, regardless of one's race or religion. So, let's go for it. Hello, good afternoon everybody. Being a writer, a playwright and stage drama director and research uh, uh, articles writer and all these years of my writing life for the last 50 years in my writing life I've received so many awards but my Sambhava is one of my uh, I can proudly say that I've done something for Singapore even though all my other awards are so important for me but do you know why being a Singaporean every Singaporean writer should do for what they, for their own country's contribution. That's what I believe now I have done. And I'm very proud to say that I'm a writer. Thank you. Hi everybody, Larry here. So uh, what does Singapore mean to me? Singapore means home to me. It's a place where I feel belong and I will feel safe with my family and friends around me. And um, what advice would I give to our new friends who just joined the Singapore family? I would say be open to our culture, make more friends with locals, and you are definitely in for a good time. See you around. Hello, I'm Marcelo. I grew up in the Philippines. I'm a naturally curious person. I like to know how things work. I like to know the reasons why we do certain things in such ways with the objective of suggesting improvements, making things work better to improve how we live our lives, to make us live more happier lives. For the Philippines, I moved to the United States, I lived in upstate New York to further my studies, to get my doctorate degree in electrical engineering and in robotics and teach in the University of Rochester. I had a chance to move to Singapore in 1989 after six years in the United States where I now work in the National University of Singapore in the Mechanical Engineering Department doing research and technology in robotics. The objective of robotics and science and technology is to improve the quality of our lives by removing the Ds in our life, tasks that are dangerous, dirty, demeaning, degrading, and more recently, like driving vehicles. So I work in self-driving cars, for example, and other robotic applications to how AI or machine learning can be used to improve the performance of machines. I think Singapore is the best place in the world where we can advance this science and technology and even advance the way we do things to suggest improvements and pass it out and make Singapore be the first in the world to try these new things first to take advantage of the new advances in science and technology. Singapore means to me a safe haven, a place of mental security where nobody cares who I am, a place of physical security where I can work efficiently, a place of neutrality far away from my country of birth that is torn by an unsolvable language struggle. Here in Singapore, I can simply be myself. My most memorable moment of contribution to Singapore was the Comchest Care and Share charity show live TV broadcast by Media Corp from the World Sentosa Resort Auditorium in 2014. I've done many projects in public and private sector, gala, celebration, you name it. But this Comchest Care and Share charity concert 
put together a huge orchestra of musicians who were all children and teenagers with special needs. The honesty and rawness of their playing was for me an invigorating lesson of humility. My hope and aspiration for the people of Singapore is for them not to lose their soul, to retain their identity and keep going. In my own way, in the field of art, I hope to make a contribution. To newcomers, my advice would be for them to retain their cultural roots and at the same time, they need to blend in with the community. I would say Singapore has been blessed with amazing leadership that transformed Singapore from a third world country into a thriving metropolitan city. I feel a sense of pride to be its citizen, participate in growth of this country in whatever way I can. From being an honest citizen, hard-working family man, devout Sikh, I feel my duties towards the nation and helping the community, particularly the underprivileged, in whatever way I can. I am a part of grassroots. As a reflection of my thankfulness towards the country, I feel the need to contribute more to make whatever difference I can. Thank you. I came in Singapore in 1991, just for two months, and then I'm, I end up being here for 30 years. It's it's amazing journey for me because I was when I came in Singapore. Uh, Singapore was already developed, but culturally it was a kind of desert. Not much was developed in culture. So my my the greatest pleasure is that I was witness in developing of culture and scene in, in Singapore and uh, I directly participated in many ways. The second important part of my life in Singapore it was in education because again I was witnessing uh, the group of young graduates from 27 years in La Salle who became now the, the middle-aged successful artist. What I should recommend newcomers in Singapore is very simple, respect locals respect local culture and don't eat too much thank you hi this is Amit Sinha I came to Singapore 22 years back straight from business school started my career in the banking at bottom of the rung but thanks to great bosses mentors and obviously with a lot of hard work I was able to grow quickly and more importantly, able to realize my full potential. Also, my kids were born here. I was able to give them good education, help them so that they're ready to conquer the world. Now, Singapore today has become a regional hub in Asia. In fact, a lot of global companies are looking at Singapore as a beachhead to Asia. I'm hoping that one day, Singapore become a global hub, one of the key cities in the world. Now, professionally, I am helping a lot of companies to come move here to make Singapore as a head office. But on a personal front, I do work and I would keen to work a lot more with a lot of young kids. Some kids who are not as fortunate to help them, support them, mentor them, guide them and help them to see they can meet their aspiration and meet their full potential. Thank you. I did my Guinness World Record in 2003. I did it in uh, Wampus Wampa Community Club. Still, I remember the minister, Mr. Heng Chi Hao, you, he told me that he was so proud that I put the name of Wampa Community Club of Singapore in the world map when I did the Guinness Record. So that moment I cannot forget. And uh, one more thing is I was chosen one of the three artists uh, by, for the bicentennial celebration of Singapore, uh, we painted 270 meters canvas. That was another uh, memorable moment which I cannot forget in my life. I feel, uh, as an art therapist, I feel art should expand everyone and each and every person must do a simple art at least every day at home. 
and the, the uh, Art Museum of New York and Art Museum of France. I feel like Singapore should have a beautiful things like this and me artists uh, like us, we have more things to explore and more uh, knowledge and experience by having the museums in Singapore. Hello, a big hi from Tashkent, the capital city of uh, Uzbekistan where I do spend a lot of time and as a newly minted Singaporean, uh, my best contribution to the country, my new homeland, uh, has been to enhance the relationship, uh, bilateral economic relationship between Singapore and uh, Uzbekistan uh, through my work. Uh, we have made significant investments as a Singaporean company and we are the largest investors from Singapore uh, or probably from Southeast Asia into Uzbekistan uh, and not only that um, uh, this has resulted into convincing the government in Uzbekistan to allow visa free access to Singaporean citizens which is a great deal because this is not on a reciprocal basis and my continuous work uh, to enhance this relationship between the two countries has uh, resulted in the government of Uzbekistan, uh, particularly the president of Uzbekistan, honoring me as a Singaporean citizen with the highest civilian award of the country, the Dostlik, last year, and which is a proud moment, not only for me, but as a Singaporean, it's a great moment for all my countrymen to be part of this. So thank you very much, Singapore. For Hi, this is Amin Khan, and I have my origin from Pakistan. Singapore has been home for many years and our kids are born and now being brought up here as well. They speak Chinese, Singlish, and also have a deep sense of belonging to the country and the community. One of the most memorable moments uh, that I've had uh, are when I was invited in honor to sing Madula Singapore and recite the National Pledge on stage during the Singapore's National Day celebrations a few years ago. It was the first time that I've had that patriotic moment as a new citizen. And I actually made an effort to memorize and try to give my best to it. Singapore has been very kind over the years and we hope to give it back and integrate well into the local community while being strongly bonded with the origin and families in Pakistan and abroad. It's been an amazing and a memorable journey so far. And I hope to continue to promote neighborliness, harmony, and cohesiveness among the people and the community. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Rajan Jain. Initially, Singapore was a country where my family and I had been unwillingly transferred by my company to further their own needs. However, as I lived here and took up citizenship and interacted with its people and the government, I began to admire and soon grew to love the hard-working culture of its people and the immensely honest government. Despite all odds, the achievements of the country as a whole greatly inspired me and I too wanted to play a role in contributing to this wonderful country. I would like to see Singapore as being recognized more and more as a model country where in spite of its tiny size and low natural elements has come up on the basis of its educated and mature citizens. The inhabitants here have been have used their intelligence and brain power to put aside religious and cultural differences and work together to improve the living standards of its people. To this goal, one of my desires is to contribute towards higher education as I believe that a good and sound education automatically leads to a better understanding and acceptance of each other and inculcates in you a, a desire to improve yourself and your country using fair and just means. Thank you. Singapore for me is quite simply home. I came more than 40 years ago, started a family along the way and have lived two thirds of my life here now. As much as I felt welcomed back then, and perhaps even more so in today's highly interconnected world. I hope Singapore continues to embrace 
diversity. At the same time, I'd encourage newcomers to not just learn the ways and norms here, but to give of yourselves to the community, not just in your functional expertise, but also culturally. That is what helped me and is, I believe, what will help all of us going forward in the journey of integration. Hello, friends. At the outset, I would like to congratulate Takashi and Vannaji for their tremendous efforts in putting this book together. I am really privileged to be part of this book and honored to be a citizen of this country. Singapore, as we all know, my dear friends, is a rare and precious example of a multiracial, multilingual, and multi-religious society where all the people live harmoniously together. Massive infrastructure and fast-paced development along with the exponential economic growth that flourishes amongst its natural beauty is the hallmark of this country. But more than that, my dear friend, what really thrives within the city is beyond what our eyes can see. It is made up of Chinese, Malay, Indian, and various other ethnicity with cultural heritage, which is making the Singapore the Singapore of today. It's a real hub of different cultures coexisting in one congenial space. We at Singapore have ample resources with incredible talent and immense kindness at heart. All we need to do is to build and to challenge our next generation to put down their smartphones and be more present and be more involved in the world around them. You'll be amazed at the results when you take ownership of a problem, facing the less fortunate that resonates with you. A famous Chinese philosopher by the name Lao Zi once said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So my dear friends, my message to you is the following. No contribution is too small. And all we need to do is to give back to the society by contributing whatever best we can and make the world a better place for our contributions. Thank you very much. Wow, that was a really impressive video montage with inspiring sharing and quips from some of the Singaporeans that are featured in this book. And now I would like to introduce a very important person and the leading lady of the afternoon, the author of the book, Stories of Integration, Mrs. Wandana Agawal. Mrs. Agawal is a former educationist and a freelance journalist. She mostly writes on topics of cultural and historical interests, and she has previously researched and chronicled the history of the oldest Indian Women's Club of Singapore in her book titled Voice of Indian Women, the Kamala Club of Singapore. This is the second book that will be launched today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the author of Stories of Integration, Mrs. Wandana Agarwal. Thank you, Dr. Koral, for the very warm introduction. Mr. Chi Hong Tat, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Transport, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon to you all. Thank you so much for joining us on a Sunday afternoon for the launch of the book, Stories of Integration. Books are usually written because they give voice to a writer's ideas and thoughts. However, some books give voice to the thoughts of others and reflect the way they live their lives. Stories of Integration is one such book. In 2019, Mr. Prakash Hetam Sarya shared with me his thoughts about the possibility of a book showcasing the contributions of naturalized citizens towards Singapore. I have known Prakash Ji for many years and have witnessed firsthand his passion for integrating into the Singapore way of life. So it came as no surprise that he was contemplating a book featuring Singaporeans who by accident of birth were born overseas, but are now proud citizens of Singapore. 
we brainstormed and came up with a plan of interviewing a set of accomplished Singaporeans who came here from various parts of the world, bringing with them very talents and a desire to serve the community. The final 30, most of whom are here with us in this webinar today, range in age from their 20s to their 70s and trace their roots to 13 countries across the globe. The chapters in this book are not just 30 stories, rather they are personal journeys of men and women who shared with me their experiences and emotions and I'm grateful to them for bearing their hearts and endowing me with the great responsibility of putting their thoughts into words. Their stories are a testimony of their dedication and desire to give back to the society that they are now a part of. I can say without exaggeration that meeting them, learning firsthand about their desire to succeed and go the extra mile to serve Singapore has been inspirational for me as well. It has made me pause and question, am I doing enough? How else can I serve this nation? It has also taught me the important lesson that it doesn't matter what or how much you do. It's the sincerity of effort, the focused attention and single-minded dedication to what you do that sets you apart. This book has been two years in the making and I'm grateful and honored that SMS Chi Hong Tan is here with us today for the book launch. Thank you, sir. My heartfelt gratitude to all our distinguished guests who were so encouraging and supportive with their messages. Your presence here means a lot to me. Melvin, Mindy, editors, and other officers at Marshall Cavendish. Thank you for believing in this idea and for helping it bring it all together. My sincere thanks to Dr. Anita Devi Pillai and Dr. Koral Lai for guiding us as well as agreeing to come here and moderate the panel discussion today. Thank you, Baldev Ji, for bringing the book alive with your photography skills. I'm also grateful to my family and friends in Singapore and overseas who have helped me in this journey in more ways than one. I may not mention you by name, but I couldn't have done it without your support. Writing this book has been a great journey. I hope all of you will enjoy reading the book as much as I enjoyed writing it. Let us not forget that Singapore is a country that has been built by the sweat of immigrants. Therefore, I believe that many of these stories will resonate well with the readers, as these are not just the stories of integration today, but they are also a reflection of our past. Thank you so much. And I now hand you over to Dr. Coral, who will take us through the rest of the afternoon. Dr. Coral. Thank you, Mrs. Wandana. And next, we have another very special person without whom this book would not have been possible. Before I invite him to the screen, let me introduce Mr. Prakash Kumar Hentamsarya. Mr. Prakash Hentamsarya came to Singapore in 1995 and became a Singapore citizen in 1999. He's a chartered accountant and CFO by profession and has served in numerous grassroots organizations and immigrant associations for many years and he strongly supports the concept of integration of new citizens. His experience as a naturalized citizen and grassroots leader has made him conscious of the need to give back to society. In 2021, he was awarded the PBM for his meritorious service in his community work. Prakash commissioned his first book called Integration, a naturalized citizen's perspective, which describes his journey from immigrant to naturalized citizen in 2015. And following this success, he's embarked on this current collaboration with Mrs. Wandana, and that's culminated in the book that's been launched today. And now, please join me in welcoming Mr. Prakash K. Hantamsarya to the screen. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Koral, for the warm introduction. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chi Hong Tat, Senior Minister of the State, Ministry of Transport, my good friend, Don Wee, 
who finally managed to join us today. Uh, he's a member of parliament for Chachu Kang GRC, distinguished guest, fellow Singaporeans and friends. I'd like to thank SMS chief for accepting our invitation to be the guest of honor for the virtual launch of the book, Stories of Integration. As the name suggests, this book is about the stories of naturalized Singaporeans who have met Singapore, their home, and contributed to the local society in one way or another. In 2015, when we are celebrating SD50, I decided to share my Singapore journey as an immigrant and then as a naturalized citizen and publish the book, Integration, a Perspective of a Naturalized Citizen. It was well appreciated by both local and immigrant community. I was so inspired by the accolades that I decided to publish another book where I thought about covering the stories of 30 naturalized Singaporeans who have integrated in the society here and call Singapore their home. This is a social project featuring 30 individuals who have successfully done good work in various fields and have been actively involved in community, social causes, arts, sports, and cultural and business. The purpose is to showcase their contribution and participation in building an inclusive Singapore society, as well as to how smoothly they have been integrated with the local Singaporeans. It was not easy to identify these 30 individuals who can represent diverse fields and share the same vision. We kept in mind that we would like to feature different races and divisions, male and female, young and old, and diverse backgrounds. The most challenging part was to identify the right mix of people without compromising the parameters. It was no surprise that there are many such individuals who have gone through similar experience, and this book is tribute to all of them. The next challenge was to identify a writer or author who had experience in writing and was willing to contribute their time as a volunteer. I share the concept with Mrs. Pandana Agrawal, whom I had known for many years, and she immediately agreed to work on this project. She supported the project 100% and helped in identifying the candidate for the book. The project is starting in October 2019, and we are targeting to launch last year during the National Day, but due to COVID-19 pandemic, we had to face additional challenge, like how to contact face, face to face interview, as it was important to know the individual personally when we want to share their story, but we managed to overcome this as well. I approached my good friend, Baldev Prasad. I've known him for more, almost uh, last 15 years, a freelance photographer to help in taking the photograph, and he agreed to come on board as a volunteer. His work, his hard work paid off, and the outcome in is for all of us to see in the book. I take this opportunity to thank each and everyone, starting from our guest of honor, SMS Chi Hongkar, for agreeing to launch the book today. SMS Chi Men for writing the forward, MOS Elvin Tan, and my good friend, MP Don V, Mr. William Wan, Madam AJ Suhani, Dr. Matthew Matthews, Dr. N. Vana Prasad, Dr. Rajesh Roy, Ambassador K. Kesopani, and People's Association CD, Mr. Lim Hock, you for their support and message for the book. Really, thanks a lot, all of you, for putting your good wishes and messages to, to this book. I would also like to thank Mrs. Vandana, the writer, uh, Baldev, the photographer, moderator, Dr. Anita Devi Pillai, and my very good friend and community partner for last 14, 15 years, Dr. Cora Wright, to accepting being a MC for today book launch and all the 30 featured Singaporean for being part of this great journey. A special thanks to my wife, Bhavna, Dr. Parini, who recently finished her PSL exam. You can see the challenges I have to face. I, I have to balance that uh, from her studies to my work. My mentor and guy, my elder brother, Mr. Basant, uh, my mom and family members, my nephews, Nisit and Amis for always been around to help one way or the other. Last but not the least, all our invited guests and friends, without your presence, this launch would have not been possible. Thank you so much for your love and blessing. Once again, thank you all. Thank you and over to Dr. Koralai. Thank you, Prakash, for sharing about the journey of this book. 
And now, may I invite our very special guest of honor, Mr. Chi Hon Tat, Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Transport, and Lead Advisor to the PA Residence Network Council to share a few words with us. Minister, please. Thank you very much, Dr. Coro. And a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Very happy to join you at this virtual book launch. I enjoyed very much the stories of the 30 naturalized citizens that this book, which is uh, very aptly titled Stories of Integration, have featured. Every Singaporean, whether local born or naturalized, has played a key role in making Singapore a country that we are proud to call home. The history of Singapore has always been closely intertwined with immigration. We are immigration uh, uh, nation. We, we are a city of immigrants. And many Singaporeans, uh, including myself, would have forefathers who at one point was a new immigrant. Most of us, if you trace back, whether is it uh, first generation, second generation, or like for myself, uh, my great grandparents, were born in China. My grandparents were born in Southeast Asia, uh, actually not Singapore. My grandfather was born in Indonesia, but during World War II, he came to Singapore. Uh, so, uh, but for many of us, it's a matter of how many generations. But Singapore is a country of immigrants. So we continue to bring in talented and committed individuals who are keen to be part of the Singapore family. And they are attracted to our multiracial society, this is also a place that offers good job opportunities, a safe environment. Uh, we have good governance and strong rule of law. And importantly, we are also a society that is forward-looking, open, inclusive, and welcoming to newcomers. I think that is something very valuable, something that we should continue to safeguard and treasure. This book has done a wonderful job in portraying the journeys of our new immigrants and their struggles, their challenges, the motivations to integrate and settle down in a foreign land. Not only have they brought in new expertise and ideas, and this spans a wide range of fields, you know, from the sciences, the arts, business, sports, education, a very wide variety of domains. Uh, they have also made many special efforts to give back to Singapore in different ways and made many, many attempts to forge meaningful connections with the community. Mr. Prakash Petamsarya is actually a good example. He is a grassroots leader and he's also an active member of our Residence Network Council. Actually, so is Ms. Samin Khan. Uh, they both are on the council and I really enjoyed working with them. I wish to congratulate Prakash for conceptualizing the idea of showcasing how well our naturalized citizens have integrated into our society. Mrs. Vandana Agrawa has done a tremendous job in capturing and penning these inspiring stories by carrying out extensive research and interviews with all the individuals. This book, features a representation of some of our naturalized citizens. It serves as a useful guide for new immigrants, as it is good to read about the experiences of those who have walked this journey. I think it will help our newcomers to understand how they too can integrate and contribute to our multicultural and multiracial society. Earlier when I was watching the video at the beginning of this uh, session, uh, Robert mentioned that his advice to new immigrants is to retain their own culture, retain their own identity, while finding ways to integrate and blend it. I think that's very good advice. The two are not mutually exclusive. It is not true that to be a Singaporean, you must give up on your own culture, your own language, your own identity. In fact, I think by bringing and strengthening the different identities and cultures and adding to the diversity in our society, we are enriching it. It is more difficult to integrate than to divide. 
And that's why in mathematics, we learn division in primary school, but we only learn integration in secondary school. It is more difficult to integrate, but it is more important and I think it is more effective. So I think this is something which we will always want to strive to maintain the common space that we have, shared identity, while allowing different community groups, different ethnic groups, to continue to celebrate and embrace our different language, culture, food. I think all this, in the end, add to the richness of our society. Being open and connected with the world and embracing our diversity as a strength, these are key enablers for Singapore to remain a vibrant global hub, a land of opportunity and a shining cosmopolitan city in this region. And these qualities in turn will help to secure our place in the world and enable Singapore to continue to progress and for our people to have a better future. Thank you very much. Thank you, SMS, Mr. Chi Hon Tat. We're indeed very honoured by your presence and also for your encouraging message and reminder that we are a nation of immigrants, but with a shared future. And now for the moment we all have been waiting for. We will now officially launch the book, Stories of Integration, led by our guest of honour, SMS Chi Hon Tat, author, concept writer, and all our featured Singaporeans. For this launch, may I invite all of you to bring out your book, untie the ribbon, remove the wrapper. I know it'll take a little bit of time. Just remove the wrapper and then hold it to your camera and we'll do a screenshot, right? So everybody, you got your book ready? and we'll do the official launch right now. Thank you everyone. And um, that was a really exciting moment because the gestation period of two years is finally over with the launch of this book. And now we come to the next segment, the exciting segment, which is the panel discussion. And allow me to introduce the moderator for this panel discussion, who will be uh, speaking with five of our panelists. So Dr. Anita Devi Pillay is an applied linguist and award-winning teacher, educator at the National Institute of Education, Nanyang University, Nanyang Technological University. She has authored and edited creative and non-creative fiction books, as well as translated a historical fiction novel titled Sembawang, a novel from Tamil into English. She's best known for her research into the Singapore Malayali migrant community that was supported by a National Heritage Board grant and resulted in the publication of a book from Kerala to Singapore, Voices from the Singapore Malayali Community. So may I now invite Dr. Anita Devi Pillay to start the panel discussion and also to introduce the panelists. Anita, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Carol. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here. And thank you so much to Vandana and Prakash for inviting me on board to you know, to moderate this panel. Um, Carol gave an introduction, but first and foremost, and most importantly, I am um, I'm a fourth and third generation Singaporean. My great grandparents arrived um, on my maternal side in Singapore, uh, in Malaya, and and my paternal parents, grandparents arrived in Singapore. So both my parents were born and raised in Singapore as well. And it's it's a topic that's very close to my heart and it's it's a current topic as well. And it's a delight to read so many different perspectives, right? Put together, so many different little stories put together and they all tell the same tale. They all talk about the story of becoming Singaporean or being Singaporean. It's almost as if Singapore is part of you already. And with that, let me um, move on to, you know, introduce the panelists. We've got with us, Mr. Larry Young, Mr. Mr. Larry Young, say hi. Uh, Mr. Sivin Safaya, 
uh, Mr. Caesar Baluta, Mr. Arvind Kumar Sami, Mr. Alexandra Durek. Familiar names, familiar faces that you all would know. So let me, without much further ado, let me just throw a question out to all of you guys, right? And anyone just, just answer. What does it, and one word answer, guys. So what does it mean to be a Singaporean to you? One word answer, come, go for it. One word's hard. Oh, one I, short know, I know, I <laughs> know. That's a challenge. One short phrase, being at home. Okay, short phrase, guys, short phrase. One quick short phrase. The first thing that being comes at to home. Mind. Being at home, uh, yes. So, uh, Larry, Alexandra, Armin. Feel, okay. feel, feel at home, I mean. For, for me, it's responsibility. Yeah, I think all of us have a, have a role to play. So for me, it's responsibility. Responsibilities. Home, home, responsibilities of it? Pride. Absolute pride, pride. Oh. yes. Arvin? Honor. Great honor. Uh, oh, wow. It's such an honor to have all of you here with us today. <laughs> now, let me go, move on to... No, Larry, you talked about your experience. You know, you talked about how your experience in Singapore in the early years actually shaped your interest in the community and participatory design. Could you tell us more about it, especially about this term participatory design? Yeah, I, I think maybe just to give some context to everyone, uh, I actually work in a nonprofit design organization called uh, Participate in Design. So um, what we do really is to co-create uh, solutions with residents um, and to really advocate for citizen participation in you know, spatial design, and uh, policy making, right? So I think a lot of times during my work, I really had to talk to residents, you know, get down to actually ask them what would they like to see in the neighborhood for programs like, you know, neighborhood upgrading or the neighborhood renewal program. So how my early days in Singapore shaped my interest, you know, in community design and citizen participation is really because I grew up in the heartlands. You know, every day talking to the mama shop auntie, you know, going down to the void deck to talk to the uncle auntie and all my friends in the void deck, you know, playing catching. I think all this really made me very interested, you know, in, in, in talking to people. And, um, you know, when I studied architecture in architecture school, I start to question, you know, when we design for communities, you know, why we never talk to them before designing spaces, right? And so that really got me thinking and, um, you know, practicing for two years architecture in Singapore, I really decided to go into, you know, uh, social design, participatory design to really continue my interest. So I would say, yeah, my early days in Singapore, living in the heartlands, really have a very big influence in, in, in what I'm doing today. Yeah, getting everybody a voice uh, to talk about design of uh, spaces and policies. It's interesting that you bring up um, having an, a voice, right? A voice amongst many voices. Is that something you feel very strongly about? I, I think definitely, because like I say, right, to me, you know, responsibility is a very big thing. I feel all Singaporeans uh, should really bear in mind because I feel that it's our role as citizens, you know, to really voice out if things are not going the right way, right, and work together with our agencies and our grassroots, you know, to co-create solutions. Because I always believe, you know, government don't have the answers to everything. It is only right if us citizens come together and work together with the government, as well as the grassroots organizations and nonprofit organizations to create solutions that will last in the long term. So, yeah, I'm definitely very positive about that. So, and that's rather interesting because it's something that I think Cecil also has talked about, you know, in his in the in the, the narrative. It's about getting engaged. It's about a two way relationship, right? I think Cecil, you make a comment about my immigrants making a conscious effort to integrate with Singapore at this, you know, culture and norms, and it, it, it being a two way relationship. Cecil, could you tell us more? Okay. Well, um, I, I I mentioned that in relation to uh, what we were asked what advice do we have for newcomers? And I'm just mm -hmm. reflecting yeah. on my own experience. And basically it's, uh, first of all, of course, having to learn and, uh, and the norms and the ways here. And you need to sort of understand how to blend in. But it also doesn't mean that you lose where you came from. And in fact, I think for, especially now, with many, many more different nationalities and cultures being absorbed in Singapore. It's, it, it would be interesting if we could individually contribute from our origin of original cultures and add to the color and diversity of what would be a Singapore identity. I think identity is an evolving thing. It cannot be static. The world is changing and Singapore has to continue changing. 
and I think from our various different, I think you mentioned 13 countries uh, uh, among the 30 of us who are featured in the book. If a little bit of each of our cultures goes in to what the original, I guess, three major uh, cultures that were here uh, first developed, then I think we will become a more vibrant, integrated society. It also would, I think, uh, help um, people who were born here to sort of like uh, open their eyes to other uh, perspectives, other cultures. And it's a two-way acceptance of each other's contributions. Oh, absolutely. And I think Arvind does a far better work with this, a lot of work with the integration of different cultures and bringing things together. And his work, especially, right, I think this brings in new ways and new forms. And it's an integration, a very careful, considered integration of different cultures. Arvind, could you tell us more about your work and how it reflects in you know, Singapore? I think, uh, firstly, I just want to say that I feel very honored to be a Singaporean and, and uh, very honored to be part of this uh, book. Uh, and uh, I think what really makes me very happy today is that when we saw the videos and when I hear the speakers before me, uh, culture seems to be a very important uh, factor. And since I work in the culture and I work for culture, it makes me feel very uh, humble that actually I'm doing something very important to the nation. Uh, yes, Anita, so my work uh, is about integrating, it's about working uh, with new Singaporeans with, uh, uh, and also with the different races and cultures within Singapore. And uh, at Apsara Saats, uh, we do a lot of collaboration working with, uh, with many people uh, uh, from different backgrounds, uh, from heartlanders, and also very importantly, bringing the different cultures in Singapore together, not just the usual Malay, Indian, mm. Eurasian, but also the other nationalities who live here, like the Cambodian, the Indonesians, uh, and, and the, the different uh, cultures that exist here as a vibrant society. And uh, I think uh, for me, my contribution and my passion and my mission is to put Singapore on the world map. And uh, before I got on to a full-time career in the arts, I was in the information technology, where I brought the Singapore company uh, to an uh, international collaborative company, I put it on the world map. And uh, then I continued to work on this, uh, on the culture sector as well, uh, trying to put Singapore on the global map. And I think uh, I would say we have made some success in getting, getting that Singapore brand recognition in Indian culture uh, across the world, not just in India, but also across the world, and also making Singapore a hub for Indian arts. Uh, we have been curating a festival for 10 years, which has brought speakers and scholars and participants and delegates from all over the world to visit Singapore. And during the pandemic, they all came online and we had more and more countries joining us online. And today we uh, made Singapore the hub for uh, this kind of uh, collaboration for Indian culture. So I think uh, this has been a great place. And why Singapore uh, was, uh, was successful because before I made Singapore home, uh, though I was born in Sri Lanka, I had lived in other parts of the world like Australia, like UK uh, and, and USA. And I think I found Singapore to be a, a place that I would choose and I chose as a home uh, because of the many reasons that we heard from the many speakers before. But it's a country that gives opportunities. It has a country that uh, allows you to dream and allows you to realize those dreams with the support of not just the government, but also support by the community by the other Singaporeans who will then share your dream and work along with you to make those dreams happen. So I think in a nutshell, I think it's a country that dreams can happen because the community can come together. Thank you, Anita. You said so many, so many interesting things. And the one thing that, you know, that shouted out at me that, that just jumped out for me was the fact that you chose Singapore. Yeah. You guys chose Singapore. So yes. let me put this question to you, Subin, then. Tell me about one of the most significant moments of your life in Singapore. Well, the most significant moment of my life is when I ate my first meepok. <laughs> that, I tell you, is where you discover that the, that the whole of Singapore lives in that meepok. <laughs> but to be honest, I think every day produces a memorable moment in Singapore. And you know, for, 
for the sort of, I said pride, I define pride. There are moments every day that I feel extremely proud of Singapore, but there are moments every day, the cynic in me says the moments every day that makes me pretty scared about Singapore, about the future of Singapore. In the context of today's sort of, you know, book launch and, and Bandana's fabulous book, I thought I would pick a moment to answer your question where the MCCY it uh, awarded a play that I wrote, We Are Like This Only Two, uh, an award for contribution to integration. And the reason I pick it as a great moment is not because there was an award given, but because it gave me hope. And, you know, in, this, in, our, in our world, we can see integration as a problem and we can see integration as a solution. And we can say, oh, we're going to punish and, and reprimand people who don't toe the line and we're going to, you know, but in the process, if you don't consider it as a, uh, look at it as where's the solution, we tend to sort of say all the nice things that we want to say about integration, how wonderful things are and how wonderful we've been and integrating into the society and patting ourselves on the back. But we, in the process, do not peel the integration onion. And I think in this play, what we did was we peeled the integration onion to get to the root causes. And when you get to the root causes, that produces the solutions that are that live longer and uh, you know become beneficial to generations to come. And I think in a sense, that moment for me was a, a, a moment of hope because this, the, the government, the MCCY decided that they were prepared to listen to uh, the hard stories of integration as opposed to the soft, all uh, fuzzy, warm stories that people come up with. And that is where the hope lies. It's if we can all sit down and say, accept what is the truth about what is and isn't uh, you know, happening in this country with respect to integration, we will only let these attitudes you know, remain dormant like a virus and when the, when the moment is right under the circumstances, as we've seen in other countries, it's happening, right-wing centrist movements are all over the place. It can emerge in a very, very virulent, damaging, you know, weaponized form. The, my hope about Vandana's book is not that it is read only by South Asians. My hope about Vandana's book is that it is read by everybody in Singapore. Because us reading our own stories ain't gonna get us very far. It is, that is the importance of this book. Oh, that absolutely is. And it's going to create waves and it's already creating waves from what I understand. No, I, I, you raised very, 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 very crucial points that we've got to take, keep in mind that the, it's, it, the conversation is not a one-sided conversation. It's something that you know, Caesar also brought up. It's, it's not a one-sided conversation. The conversation, it, it's an ongoing one and one that should take into account different perspectives. Now, Moving forward, let me let me go on to Alexandra. Alexandra, can you tell us about your? And I've already prompted you on this. Tell us about your. What do you? What is? What do you like most about Singapore? What is your? What is so unique about Singapore? You've got so many experiences to share, but you know what is unique about Singapore? I can say that there's so many things which want to amaze me. But Singapore is a unique uh, country and the city. It's a. Uh, I know a lot of a little bit more history about Singapore and thinking about how far Singapore developed as a country, as a city from the 60s all the way today. Um, what, what we are unique here is basically of the mixture of the West and East or the mixture of the culture, mixture of the race and religion uh, living under the one roof. Um, something I'm, I'm so proud to be part of it. Um, and um, of course, um, unique is something when I came here and uh, arrived in 1992, I got an opportunity to live and, uh, you know, uh, and grow my family and, uh, you know, my kids was born here and, um, and all these things. I, I prob probably one of the things is uh, I'm also unique for myself is the ends of Singapore. I also learned to uh, English and my English is here. So we are all unique in, with our English lie and all these things. So I love that because sometimes on my phone, when I call and they, uh, they are kind of like, they, by name, my name and surname, they think this guy is a foreigner, but then he speak like a real Singaporean. So it's like, so it's a, it's a, so many unique things is, a, and I'm really proud of the, um, that I'm a proud, uh, you know, part of this. I, um, I'm also very proud that um, I give the small, 
not the big, but the small contribution to Singapore, at least uh, through the, my sport as a football player, played for national team, uh, been captain of the national team, probably first one in, uh, who never wasn't born in Singapore, but was um, honored to be captain. So uh, all these things is the small things. I um, uh, love to do a lot of uh, charity works and I'm also uh, involved in uh, all the things. Um, I'm giving back also to community because I believe that uh, we should give back. And um, myself, um, I think Minister is, uh, knows I'm involved uh, very much in uh, his constitution in uh, uh, Topayo with the football sessions and I giving back to the kids and uh, to, you know, to um, come back and play sports and, you know, enjoy, um, teach them some good, uh, through the sport, good uh, life values. I think we, um, you know, we, we need to understand that, um, you know, Singapore is unique as a place because we all bring something to um, uh, build and bit, uh, make bigger and stronger uh, Singapore. So I, um, I'm really happy that I'm a part of that and I'm continue doing what I love to do and being here. Um, my kids was growing up here and um, study. And so it's, um, it's um, yeah, it's uh, so many things we can, we, uh, I can talk about Singapore in, uh, yeah. And the one thing, one, you used a phrase uh, that I'm really Singaporean and, and that is true, isn't it? I mean, that's every single one of you um, on the panel today and, and featured in the book today as I was reading it, and that's what I felt, it, I didn't feel at any point that you were outsiders stepping in. The narratives were about Singaporeans, the narratives were about Singaporeans who were contributing, who were part of the larger society. And that itself, when I, when I put down the book and I thought, oh, it is, it is indeed integration because you are part of the larger narrative. It, is, it didn't feel like a separate narrative, you know, that you were bringing in. And you make it richer with all, you know, with, with the, with your background and your talent and your strengths and everything that you've done for, you know, in Singapore and for Singapore. So my question then is, I've got two questions, yeah? Um, Subin, what message would you have for new citizens who've just joined the Singapore family? Oh, I think it's, it's, a, very, it's a very simple message because I, being somebody who has gone through the journey myself, you don't come and then nobody comes into this country with a laundry list of things to do with respect to integration saying, oh yeah, I got to do this. Neither does anybody come and saying, I'm going to bring my baggage over and please make room for me because and, 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 and so discord in the, in the community. Nobody does that. I think everybody recognizes this is a competitive place. You've got, you've got to prove your worth. You've brought, got to prove your value. Uh, not just value to uh, to and being a productive member of uh, of uh, an economic community, but also of a social community. I think that that burden rests on people because they're coming to a new place. But on the other hand, they have to themselves contend with fear, fear of rejection, fear of of the anticipation that they their competitiveness and they're maybe seen like you know, they're getting into somebody else's turf. These are all real, real conditions that they're, that's going through their minds. And I think, I mean, uh, I think it was to Larry's point and Alexander, you know, people mentioned this, that the onus is also on the people who are already resident here, uh, both the immigrant community, as well as the, the previous generations of Singaporeans to make it a little bit easier for uh, the, the newcomers. But generally speaking, my advice to the newcomers is, is as long as you prove your worth, as long as you're in the pursuit of excellence and youth, you know, and you're, you're able to sort of adapt and conform to the societal rules and that exist here, you will be welcomed, you will be respected, and you will be valued. If not, stay home. We want to, and we're coming to the end of the panel session. We want to end it on a sweet note. Larry, tell us. What would you miss most about Singapore if you were to leave, ever leave? Okay, this one is without, no need to concede, no need to think. It will be Roti Prata. Roti oh, Prata, Roti Prata, right, of Because, uh, you know, when I was studying in Korea, I was there for half a year. I miss Roti Prata every day, you know. And our Roti Prata is very unique. You can't find yes. the same Roti Prata anywhere else in the world, you know. So, yeah, that's definitely one thing I will miss a lot if I were to leave Singapore, you know. <laughs> oh, you're so right. I've had it in Kerala. I've had it overseas. It's in, in Australia, it's never the same, <laughs> right? Thank you very much, everyone. That's about the time we have for the panel session. Uh, it was wonderful speaking to all of you. And really, thank you so much for giving us your time. Um, back to you, Dr. Carol. 
Thank you, Dr. Anita and panelists. You guys really reflect our Singapore as it is a really very exciting melting pot of different cultures, tastes, and background. Whoever said that Singapore is a boring place? It is a country, like what some of you said, where dreams come true and where we can have unity in diversity. So let's now continue to expand our conversations in the next and last part of tonight, uh, today's event. This is the open session, and I would like to invite all participants, those who are following uh, the, the event, as well as the panelists here on the Zoom room, to pose questions or share comments about your experiences living in Singapore, or maybe to share some interesting snippets or funny stories, or to pose any questions to you know, uh, those who have been featured in this book. Now, you may just unmute your mic to speak or type into the Q&A box, or if you're a panelist, just type into the chat box. And while you're beginning to do that, let me start by inviting uh, Dr. Zubaya Amin. Dr. Zubaya, you're in. Dr. Zubaya is also my colleague at work. Um, and he comes from Bangladesh. Besides his clinical work, he's very much into education, charity, work, and nature. So let me ask you, Dr. Zubaya, in your book, you mentioned that your daughters take Chinese as a second language, while your younger son takes higher Chinese as a mother tongue. Now, that's not easy for some of us struggling with, you know, even the second or third language. Maybe you could share with us, you know, what was the motivation for them to take up Chinese and what was your uh, family's experiences? So we have been here for 20 over years now uh, living here. And my daughter came here around six months of age. And I think, uh, uh, I mean, it sounds uh, very, you know, unique, but I thought that... Uh, the Chinese uh, as a language uh, should be an uh, integral part of our journey uh, to be in Singapore, because this is a place where uh, I hope our kids will be here and live. So uh, the, for eldest one, um, we choose as a second language and we're uh, quite successful, I would say. She, she, uh, and that inspires us, of course. I mean, we didn't have a second thought about the second one with Samira. And uh, yeah, like, I mean, she just completed her, uh, uh, you know, the uh, IB diploma. And uh, soon after that, she started actually teaching uh, Chinese as a private tutor. Um, and she was bold enough to do that. And uh, for, the, for the youngest one, the Saif, uh, and uh, we had a long discussion among ourselves that what to do about, uh, you know, the second language. And actually we opted to, you know, opted for uh, Chinese as a mother tongue. Of course, he goes into the local school and uh, and I would say that the, the help that I received from the teachers and, uh, you know, they, they are it's outstanding. I'm an educator myself. I know how to value teaching. And also the uh, teachers that come home, their home tutor uh, and my fellow colleagues, they will always, provide me with the book, stories, and, you know, uh, all sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, help that uh, he needs. Uh, so, and I would say that uh, um, uh, it's helping and, uh, and we are quite successful and committed. I mean, she, he is in uh, higher Chinese uh, now. And uh, I mean, with the help from everyone, um, um, I, I think I made a, one of the best decisions in my life. So they speak many languages. Thank you, Dr. Zubaya, for sharing. I'm sure the other panelists and participants, to those who are naturalized citizens, especially if you come from Ireland or Indonesia or you know other countries, have you struggled with uh, speaking Mandarin? Well, Singlish must have been quite easy to pick up. Anyone has got any interesting stories to share? I do not see anything in the chat group, but uh, please feel free to just unmute your mic. Otherwise, I will go and take one question from the Q&A. Somebody asked, how were the 30 individuals who were featured in the book selected? Uh, Wandana and Prakash, which of you would like to take this question? I, uh, I'm happy to take the question and Mr. Prakash can add on. 
uh, it wasn't easy because we have so many not just well qualified but hard working dedicated singaporeans and to see through all of them to take some and not take the others was a very difficult task for prakashi and for me we we, we were looking at a balance of uh, men and women we were looking at a we were looking at various countries so that we can you know represent as many countries as possible different professions and we were very very sure that we did not want to choose people who were at the higher end of their career it wasn't important to be the ceo of a company you could be a housewife and you could still give back to singapore so we needed a representation of people across races religions nations age groups and professions and we are so grateful to the panel 30 who agreed to be represented in this book at the same time they represent all the silent majority whom we've not been able to showcase in the book so so that was how we went about mr prakash would you like to add something to that yeah thanks vandana so i i think it's not easy like vandana right we said it's not easy to select firstly we have a limited resources we are we are just like a volunteers and uh, we are a full time professional who is working for the company and this is like to do contribute back to the society so of course we have to use our own networks to reach out to the different people to friends to friends reach out try to call as many people as possible and whoever come on board but keeping the different parameters has to be a different field has to have been here for say at least more than 10 years can be new citizens but it is been rooted in singapore for it is more than 10 years and at the same time they are they have a different age group diverse background if you can see the profile we don't want to just feature like a grassroots leaders or volunteers if they are successful in their own field some can be like an entrepreneur some can be like a sports personality some can be an artist some can be a musician so that's how we try to select each and every one of course there are few of us who are the coming from the volunteer backgrounds and at the same time we try to find out people from the different country different races different religion so we try to cover at least as many as religion we have uh, possible so that's how i mean it's, it's been a challenging part so we and hope it safely yeah. say that i have read the newspapers very very carefully in the last two years we were underlining names looking googling people trying to find out the right people any time anyone was mentioned we were both on the job looking looking for how the ways to contact that person and you know be keeping our fingers crossed true true yeah thank you i hope that thank addresses uh, the the question that was raised and i think this 30 that have been featured you know from the diverse background is really amazing story so please pick up the book and read it and so now let's move on to marcelo uh, marcelo yes. you unmic i unmuted your mic yes uh, thank you carl for this opportunity i've been thinking about life in general what makes me happy after if we ask that question right it's really making other people happy even one person really makes your day right that's why i really like interacting with people i was quite concerned uh, you know uh, about uh, some of the stories when you do storytelling to children even by our singapore police force right? like saying never talk to strangers i find that odd uh, because i grew up talking to strangers trying to help trying to find out more but if our kids grow up uh, learning that we should not talk to strangers i think that will be a very cold society yeah. but i know what what the police man what everyone man because there are some strangers that you know that they are have ulterior mot- motives and things like that but we shouldn't generalize so this is also related to the kindness movement i think some of the stories i read also about people working the kindness movement i think we all have to really work towards a more making everybody happy will make us happier too and in that way we can be really advanced as a society and be a role model or really a, a utopian society where everybody makes ever and it's really life is so short right and we should that we just be thankful what we have and there's nothing wrong talking to strangers and being an active bystander and trying to help find out more and being um don't worry of being uh, uh classified as an outcast or a kepo or a busy party <laughs> yeah but uh, always try to help uh, and that's my wish also and i i think uh 
I hope everybody would agree with that. And our future is our, uh, now the, new, the new generation is really our young in the future. And we need really to uh, be role models for them. And that's why I'm in the academic profession. I like <laughs> meeting students, younger students than me and influencing them and, and talking about life in general. Thank you for this opportunity, Carl, and everybody. And in this book too, thank you. Thank you, Marcelo, for sharing your philosophy and telling us not to be afraid to talk to strangers, <laughs> maybe say hi, you know, in the elevator or crack a joke. Um, yes. I wonder whether, yeah, Victor, Victor Mills, you're, you're in the background. You come from Ireland. Yeah, that's right, Carl, I do. Hi, you want to share a few words with us? What, what do you, you know, think about the sense of humour in, in Singapore? Are we really very tight and kiasu? <laughs> well, I... Yeah. I I think there might be an element of that, but, you know, humour is alive and, and kicking in Singapore. Um, and what I appreciate most about um, our country is the fact that uh, here's a society that does practice what it preaches. It, it preaches good race relations and it practices good race relations. And that is something that is very precious and I hope we will always practice and hold on to. Uh, and of course, from my background, growing up in Northern Ireland during the, the troubles of the 1960s to the 1990s, um, I appreciate what Singapore has got even more. Thank you, Victor. I think that's really very true that, um, you know, we, we need to treasure, you know, our harmony, racial harmony. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Daisy Irani, would you like to share something with us? You know, I grew up watching Under One Roof. It was something that I really enjoyed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I know I, you have achieved a lot more beyond that, but maybe you want to share something, you know, with all of us who probably have watched those, you know, of us who have grown up watching Under One well, Roof. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I'd, I'd really like to say, uh, especially what I mentioned in my video, that, um, you know, when you are in the arts here, when I started, it, it, it wasn't what it is now. There wasn't as much diversity as there is now. And it, it, when I actually joined Under One Roof, I learned so much about Singapore just being in the show, uh, you know, between the food and the culture and the attitude of the people, the neighborliness, the kampung spirit, all that I learned during the show, it was like the whole show, eight seasons of Under One Roof, is what slowly transformed me into a proper, true bred Singaporean, all with my Singlish already, can talk everything, you know. And so it's been a wonderful journey. And today, when I listen to all these people, the way you've brought them all under one roof, it, it makes me very assured that, yes, heartened that the decision we made to make this country our home has been well worth it. And like Minister said, and like some of um, our participants said, we maintain our own uh, uniqueness. Here I am sitting in a sari, feeling very welcome, feeling one of us. In spite of that, uh, you know, we know that each one of us has that essence, the Majula Singapura essence. So yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me and uh, just feel very fortunate. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy, that we're all under one roof. Yes, yeah. yes, we all are under one roof. We all are, yeah. Anyone else would like to speak before I just pinpoint any of you? Please I feel think, free uh, to I unmute think, or put your chat. Yes? Amit has raised his hand. I can Amit, see. yes. Uh, hi, yeah. hi. Now, first of all, I would say congratulations to both Prakash Ji, Vandana Ji book, this wonderful book. Now, I want to talk about the hope part. I mean, one of the participants talking about it. I, you know, I work in a bank, I mentioned in my video, and I have to see a lot of young millennials who go to higher universities, Ivy League school, work overseas, but in a couple of years, they all come back to Singapore. So they bring the culture back, but bring all the knowledge, what they've gathered overseas exposure, and bring it back to Singapore. And that really gives me hope that this country has a long way to go. It also gives me a sense that, and I hope that my kids do the same thing. 
my daughter is studying overseas and I've heard Daisy talk about her kids as well, that her kids came back to Singapore. And that to me is affirmation that the choice we have made to become, make Singapore as a home actually mm-hmm. really is embraced by a next generation. Okay. They also feel that this is a place where they belong. They can come back, contribute. Mm-hmm. And I, I see that really across all sectors of society. And that gives me a lot of hope for this country. Right. Yeah. Thank you. I agree. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Amin. Yes, we are. We have lots of hope for this country. And I think Rupesh has also um, raised his hand. Rupesh? Thanks, Dr. Karan. Yes. And uh, at the outset, uh, thank you, Prakashji and uh, Vandanaji, for identifying me and Googling me. And when I got the message from Prakashji, I was like, uh, is it a spam message? I don't know why I'm getting the message. But later on, he approached me and I have to kind of uh, give away to his uh, persons and uh, probably share some part of my story. So a couple of things uh, from my end, uh, while we are on the board, and I'm really, I, I come from healthcare. I work at Tentoxin Hospital and uh, all along in my life, it's with the healthcare. I, I, but this is the first time I'm facing so many diverse uh, regions. And I think this tells and this really believe in my conviction that everyone has a role to play in the community. But I do keep hearing from the people that how can I do? I'm in banking. I am in investment bank. I'm in this. I'm in that. And people come up with 101 excuses of not contributing back. So I think this is a real example of how people can come together, contribute by whatever little with uh, whatever they can in whatever field they are. So that's number one. Number two is for what uh, Professor Marcelo alluded to. He's in NUS and we work together quite closely. And uh, uh, so one of the things which uh, I've been trying to do for last many years is to work with the students from NUS and NTU and LKC School of Medicine is to take these uh, students to different parts of the world, particularly India, Cambodia, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Myanmar, all the different places show them the world around and invite them in the different cultures and get them across all the different experiences so that because these are the future and if we can shape up the future at this stage i think uh, that's where probably we are talking one thing is talking and then probably the second thing is executing and it is only through this youth we can probably execute some of the things which we have been saying in this book i think those are the two points from mind thank you thank you dr rupesh i think um you know, some of us see a little bit clearer now, the, the bigger picture when you come to serve, you know, to, to integrate in a new country. Um, any more comments from anyone else? We have just a few minutes left before we will close the session. Um, I see uh, quite a I number of you. Yes. Just take the opportunity to say thank you to you before we just close off because you've been just wonderful and a perfect host and we loved uh, you know, every minute of what transpired. So before we just run off and take one picture, just wanted to say, yeah, everybody together, you know how we've been totally zoomed out and there are so many Zoom calls and Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. So to actually go through an hour where you're enjoying yourself and you want to be there and we are sharing and you just feel like you know each other from, from before somewhere. And, th- and that's thanks to you and to Anita and, you know, for making it such a wonderful afternoon. So thank you. Thank you, Daisy. Thank you so much. And um, I think well, we have to, I, yeah. Just, we can check whether Mr. Uh, Minister would like, yes. like to say a few words. Would you, would you like to remarks, just close yeah. us with a few words before we go for a group uh, picture? Thank you, uh, Carl. I just wanted to thank everyone uh, once again for you know, this wonderful uh, sharing. Uh, I learned a lot listening to all of you and also reading your stories. And, you know, this uh, uh, book is um, because of limitation of uh, uh, time and resources. We can't feature all the wonderful stories that we have out there. But I certainly hope that it can be a catalyst to inspire other people to also step forward and share their stories so that, you know, we have more positive uh, examples, positive stories. And this is something which um, I think it's not just our generation but also future generations that we hope this can continue so Singapore can grow from strength to strength. Uh, so once again, thank you very much, everyone. I uh, wish all of you good health and uh, please uh, have a good weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, SMS, Mr. Chi Hontat. Yeah. And uh, before we officially close, 
Um, and then we will take a group Zoom picture. I'd like to thank everyone who has been um, here this afternoon. I hope you have enjoyed this book launch. Uh, to all our honoured guests, GOH, VVIPs, thank you for making this event a success and also spending your precious Sunday afternoon with us. And remember, this book is available at all bookstores and also on Amazon uh, Singapore and Times the Bookshop. Okay, so please pick up a copy and enjoy this, all these stories. Mm -hmm.